Hi, I'm Casey Pyle. I'm a practicing foot and ankle orthopedic surgeon out of Ventura, California. And today I'm going to be discussing the role of the graft net tissue collector in arthroscopic arthrodesis, specifically in foot and ankle surgery. Here's an overview of today's talk. We'll give a little bit of background on the role of arthroscopy in arthrodesis and the role of obtaining autograft in arthroscopic arthrodesis. We're going to discuss the technique that I've been working with on my patients and give some video demonstration of how this can be done on a cadaver, and then give two case presentations of some patients of mine who have had success with this technique. So we're seeing an increased trend in all joint surgery to make things minimally invasive. We're utilizing the role of arthroscopy whenever we can. Some of the benefits specifically for arthrodesis is that our incisions are now smaller. We're not making large arthrotomies. Preserving the soft tissue envelope, which is in the tibio-talar joint essential for preserving good blood flow to the talus. And we're trying to decrease our postoperative pain in our patients by minimizing our surgical trauma. And in any arthrodesis case, the role of autograft is always beneficial to help augment and promote a more reliable union at the arthrodesis site. However, autograft harvest has its own downsides, such as uh, donor site morbidity. We're often taking the graft from a remote location, such as the proximal tibia or the iliac crest, and it creates additional procedures which can add time to your surgery. So the solution I've been working on is utilizing the graft net tissue collector during the joint preparation of my arthroscopic arthrodesis to capture autograft that is being generated as part of my joint prep and building it into my surgical technique. So the technique overall is very similar to what you would normally do. You do your arthroscopic joint prep, first removing any articular cartilage, utilizing either curettes, osteotomes, or an automatic shaver. And then when you're going to decorticate the subchondral bone, you would put the graft net collector in line with your suction on the shaver and utilizing either a bone cutting shaver or arthroscopic burr, decorticate the bone. And then that particular debris is captured in the graft net's basket. This creates several cc's of autograft material, which can be then utilized to help augment your healing at the arthrodesis site. After you performed your joint preparation and you've captured your uh, autograft in the basket, you would then remove it and then place this in the BioExpress syringe. You can then distribute this within the joint using either the arthro paddle or the blunt OCD elevator, which can be found in your ankle arthroscopy tray. The autograft itself can be further augmented with bone marrow aspirate to add both osteoinductive and conductive properties by adding growth factors and stem cells. Therefore, you would have an autograft that is osteoconductive, inductive, and genic. The instruments I utilize are the graft net tissue collector, the BioExpress syringe, and then either the arthro paddle or a blunt-tipped OCD elevator to help distribute the graft within the joint. So here, we've already removed the articular cartilage and we're just decorticating the bone. The graft net uh, tissue collector is already inserted in line with the suction on the handle, and we're using a bone-cutting shaver to then remove that hard con subchondral bone. You can see that's creating a lot of particulate debris, and all of that that's captured will be then collected and saved in the graft net basket. So here you see we've removed the graft net collector from the suction, we're gonna open up the canister and remove the basket to show what that graft material actually looks like. So once we open it, you will see that you take several cc's of good, soft, malleable uh, autograft tissue. It's kind of the consistency of a thick toothpaste at this point. And this can be augmented, like we said, with other biologics such as bone marrow to help make it a more of a slurry that you can inject back in to help with your arthrodesis. So here, we've now placed that dry material back in the syringe, and this was in the cadaver specimen, so this is just the bone itself, but to make it more of a viscous slurry, you could again add the bone marrow to make this more injectable. The BioExpress syringe is nice because it has a larger uh, diameter cannulation to help let it flow through the portal back into the joint. So now we're back inside the joint in this arthroscopic video footage showing the injection of the graft material through your portal back into the joint. And then here we're distributing the graft utilizing that blunt tipped OCD elevator to make it more evenly spread throughout the joint. At the conclusion, you can see how this would now fill in any of your nooks and crannies nicely as you get your approximation and compression at the arthrodesis site. I have two cases I'm going to be discussing with you. This first one is a 72 year old male, history of diabetes mellitus and some peripheral neuropathy. He had a, a fracture of his ankle back in 2017, initially treated conservatively. The uh, surgeon was concerned that he would have a poor outcome because he had uncontrolled diabetes at the time and some peripheral neuropathy. He proceeded to go towards a malunion of the fibula and a nonunion of this medial malleolus and had a progressive valgus deformity and pain in his ankle with ambulation. When he presented to my practice, his A1C was now better controlled under 7% 
and we discussed treatment options, and I indicated him for an arthroscopic arthrodesis with a GraphNet tissue collector. Here are his initial injury films showing that he had already progressed somewhat to a malunion at the fibula. It's short there. The medial malleolus, we see a little early cortication and the fact that the two bones are not coming together. Here on this preoperative uh, weight-bearing view, we can see that we have uh, significant arthritis and wear at the lateral joint line. The fibula is healed but short, and the medial malleolus has gone to a non-union. When he stands, he has tibio -talar valgus, and he has extensive soft tissue swelling from the pain and irritation. Here are the intraoperative arthroscopic images of us injecting that graft material. And then our immediate post-operative images showing our compression screws. You see we have good approximation at the uh, arthrodesis site this time. Fast forward to our three-week post-op, we still have good approximation and we don't see much resorption at the arthrodesis site, which is good. And then fast forward to eight weeks, we see some significant healing at the arthrodesis site. And at four months, he's fully weight-bearing, walking, and his pain is much improved. And we see a solid arthrodesis there. Our second case is a 54-year-old female with a history of type 1 diabetes. Uh, she has some cognitive delay and significant peripheral neuropathy. She presented to my clinic with a trimalleolar fracture that was a dislocation as well, and it was reduced at an outside facility. On presentation, her A1C was 8.5%. We discussed treatment options for her, and given her metabolic state and challenge with ambulation, we indicated her for a primary arthroscopic hind foot arthrodesis. The goals here would be allowing her to weight bear more early, get our solid fixation with an intramedullary device, and have smaller wounds and surgical incisions with this being done percutaneously and arthroscopically to promote a more reliable fusion. So here are injury films that she presented my clinic with. You see a trimalleolar fracture, posterior dislocation at the ankle. Post-reduction x-rays show that the talus is back under the tibia. We see a comminuted medial malleolus, a Weber B fibular fracture that's displaced and shortened, and a posterior malleolar fragment as well. Intraoperatively, here are our arthroscopic images showing us injecting that graft material. And in the immediate post-op images, you can see we've placed a hind foot fusion nail, and we have good approximation at both the tibiotalar and subtalar joints. We prepared both joints in her, and we did this arthroscopically. At her nine-week post-op, we see good evidence of healing at both sites. And at four months, she's been walking, weight-bearing nicely, working with therapy. She uses a walker for ambulation, but more for fall prevention purposes. As we mentioned, this is means of harvesting the bone graft itself, which is one part of the kind of trifecta of autograft. We also want to augment this, and this can be done with bone marrow that can then be spun down in the angel device to create a autograft that is osteoconductive, osteoinductive, and osteogenic, as it will have the good structural material from the graft, and then you have the growth factors and stem cells coming from your bone marrow to create a very ideal healing environment. This is all done through a million base of approach, utilizing steps in a procedure that you'll always be performing with the joint preparation, and it's all utilizing the patient's own tissues. Thank you very much.